at all. I didn't watch it live. I think I was busy doing other shit or whatever at the time. So all I know is that it got pretty rough and he ended up going Sora towards the end. So I don't know if you have any initial thoughts you want to give me. So I think the big thing is just in the matchup. I don't think the playstyle I used to use works versus Wario or Kusa anymore. Yeah. Because, like, I used to, you know, stand back there, pick me, whatever. Yeah. But basically, they just evade it. Eventually, Wario wins long term, right? So I feel like it's not just about, like, being more aggressive. But it's about, like, finding ways to stop him from just surviving long enough to get wafts and also chase me down. I felt like when he wants to chase me down... He could do it super easily. Like, I was like, oh, you want to actually pressure, pressure my shield and, like, all this shit? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I play him a lot, right? When I jump at him and whip him area, I get a Yes. It is, it's a lot, it's a lot of that, like, you ideally can kind of play really slow and keep him out if he wants to play your game. But if it gets too excessive, like he said, he gets wafts, he gets in, and he does have that safe shield pressure. Uh, and I think a lot of it comes down to playing kind of almost like a reactionary, not... Not even far away game, like mid-range and intercepting as he comes in. Kind of like how we handle like Wolf, right? Where it's like you you almost wait and you're like, okay, now I caught you in a spot where you can't, you know, you, you, I can hit you. And if he retreats, you go, okay, now we reset and go off of that. But uh, I'll see I'll see what you were doing going in here. I know I was talking to him actually and he was telling me that it was just like he really committed to like not trying to play your game as much as possible. He was like, I just want to do what I want. I'm going to play to my win condition, stuff like that. Um, using the platforms and stuff like that, so it's gonna be it's gonna be tougher. But I think, like some of these other characters, even someone like Sephiroth or something, if you get the lead, you can still make him play your game. Like it doesn't matter if he gets waft; he's going to always get waft. And if you have a lead, you just go, okay, we're gonna play my game. We're, we're going to slow it down, and you will approach me, and you will lose because of it. So we'll see how this goes. I don't mind Town and City. Uh, just to preface, I don't mind it. I think it's great for Olimar. It does open up the possibility of him if he wants to try and circle camp or run away for a bit. But I think starting here is perfectly fine. Keep in mind with the rule set, we don't have FD. Have that's true. So that's true. Strike. I have to strike Talos, right? And I think I strike PS2 over Town. Okay. Because uh, I don't know, but I think Olimar's just better on Town generally than PS2. Did he? Like... So he struck Battlefield Smashville? Oh, I struck Smashville because I don't want to fight Wario in Smashville. You don't want... find that safe. He okay. overwhelms all of them are very easily. Okay. So, I don't mind Smashville. I think it's one of those things where if you're really kind of off base and you already don't have a ton of confidence in maybe pairing or outboxing or doing whatever, it's going to be really hard. But it could be something to look into in the future because I don't think the stage layout of Smashville is bad for us. I think, it, like you said, it can be easy to get overwhelmed. But if you're confident in kind of opening up his pressure, knowing how he wants to approach you, you can mess him up really bad. You can camp under that platform well, and you can do some really good, uh, almost sharking under the platform, and kind of work it to your favor because it keeps it very centralized and makes it harder for him to land. That's a, a stage I often like in games against characters who like to camp me because, yes, it keeps it small. And when it's small, all I have to do is outplay them in certain interactions, and then they have to keep interacting with me. So that could be something to look forward to in the future. Yeah, no, I don't really like that stage. I think just versus Wario in general. I'm okay. not a fan of it. Okay. Uh, I, I think the platform lets him land. Like, he can, like, kind of evade our sharking with his air mobility because the platform is kind of long. And, like, it's very easy for him to overwhelm us because he's just so fast near. Like, if he hits us, we kind of have nowhere to retreat to. Granted, it, it plays both ways. I agree with you on that one. I'm just saying, I don't think it's a simple versus Wario as say. That's true. Uh, a link, right? I, or like some sort of I will say though, I feel like uh from my experience, even in the friendlies I've done with Gluto recently and stuff like that, if you have really good SDI, you can usually whistle out of some of those combos so they're not crazy extreme. Like you can mess up the nares, you can even mess up some of the up air stuff if it's if it's not perfect. So there there is some wiggle room there, but I totally understand what you mean. But uh get, getting back to this, so I like you're immediately starting out with the side bees, getting your your Pikmin going, because the goal is to get white, the goal is to get purple, do whatever, right? Um what I think you could have done here was when he comes in, I probably would have pivot grabbed uh, or maybe tried to like do like an instant turnaround grab or something like that to cover where he's landing. Because if you go back, you're going to see like, okay, you're throwing, you're throwing. You already run back, you throw, and then you already commit to the dash back, right? He's coming in. Now, he could jump away. He could do something like that. But it's very likely he wants to fall based on what he's been doing. He hasn't shown you any reason. And since the beginning of the set, you could you could infer, okay, this is a standard dashback situation. I've been kind of feeling him out. Let's try and cover something here. Maybe I run in and grab. Maybe I run in an F smash. Maybe I dash attack, right? Like instant turnaround dash attack. But you run in and you pluck here. And that's honestly not the worst. But you don't commit to anything. 
And I think there, that, that's letting him get away with a little bit too much, right? You want to scare him away from you, because that's how you're going to stop him from staying on top of you. Yeah, that's fair. So, like, going back to the neutral here, this is fine, right? You, you literally just want as much free damage as you can get. I, like, commit heavily to the play style of just not interacting with him. Yes, like, and... If, if he hits me, I die, so I'm like, I don't want to So, what, what we can do is we can think about this. Okay, the game just started. Does not have Waft. You can interact with him a bit more liberally, right? You are not in threat of dying off a combo, and that is a big thing. Also, he doesn't have Rage, so that's going to lean more towards your benefit than his. Uh, uh, because he's not going to be able to get into those crazy combos. And I think it's good to have that kind of, like, let's not interact unless I absolutely have to. But there is a time and place to go, okay... Uh, he's committing i'm getting an idea of what he's doing i know how to escape the situation what if instead of escaping i i know you know i go in for a punish and i try to get some advantage here and I get some damage because the goal once again widen that gap if you have to play it you know i don't know if you saw my set versus ned it was very much the same where it's like i will side b until it does like three percent on a purple side b because i i cannot interact with you but i will when i know you're going to commit when i know i can catch you because i have to kill you because it's like as the game goes on if you're not committing if you're just chip damaging him he's going to eventually get you and I think here, you know, you kind of you kind of roll away. I think jump throw would have been fine. Like when you when you ran away right there, like jump, throw some Pikmin at him, like do some pick tall stuff. Like here, jump side B side B. You land, you create the distance, right? Now he's got two Pikmin coming towards him. They either latch or they shield or whatever. You have a white, so if he approaches, you have a pivot grab option. I think that would work really well. But I don't like the nair here. I think if you wanted to approach, you could have maybe done a spaced F smash, right? There's no way he's punishing an F smash from that distance. If you want to do maybe a, a, a max based fair, something like that. But that Nair, while it's a solid anti-air, if you can read what they're going to do, it's extremely committal because the animation's so long. How much do you use forward smash in neutral? Like, do you just use it as a spacing tool? Because I kind of used to use it a lot, and now I barely use that move as a spacing yes, tool. Yes, I think I it's like... a fantastic spacing tool, especially when you have those, those like, longer range colors, the red, the yellow, or whatever, or the ones that have more, like, you're getting these, not purple, essentially. Um... And, and I think it's great at that, because it's it's almost like a, hey, you have to respect this distance right now. Up close, you would win, but right here, you can't. And that's something you have to work to your favor. And if he does punish it at most, it's like a sour spot fair, right? That's not the end of the world. You DI that out, you're good to go. Um, but it, it the, the goal, once again, is to make him respect you. Because if you just run away, and he's just chasing you the entire game, he's not only going to start to memorize your defensive habits, but he's going to start to feel there's going to be certain scenarios where he's uh, almost like being a step ahead of you when he punishes, and he knows how you want to respond. It's so like, this is fine, right? You're going back, you're throwing stuff. It's not the end of the world. You don't need to rush or anything. There, I, I understand. Like, oh. Yeah. So he definitely is looking to kill out purples. I've seen that just from the few times here. He tried to f tilt it earlier. I think... Let me go back a little bit more. So he kills it. I I don't blame you for running up and, and not doing anything. You could have dash attack, but he probably would have shield in time. Yeah. yeah. Um, If you would have done late or like late dash attack like right on top of him it probably would have crossed up and maybe messed him up but either way it's fine it's slow um this was fine right like he's going to kill purples and that's fine the goal is the chip damage so now you have lead again and now you have a purple again and it doesn't matter let him cut through your pick because that just that just makes it easier for you So what I think you could do here is, so he's been killing your Pikmin when you're pretty far away a lot of the time. Uh, here you have his back to the corner. Uh, he's on the platform. He's kind of running out of stage. And you don't want to go up there and approach him, right? Because if you, if you miss space something, if you hit a shield, you're going to get hit. But what you have to do is you run away, you throw a Pikmin, and that's fine. You have a purple here. You need to follow this up, right? So this is where you can go, oh, you know what? I can throw a purple, and maybe you short hop purple. Maybe you do a grounded toss. Cover. Uh, you can see my mouse cursor, yes? Yes. Okay. Cover this area, right? So you go, hey, I'm coming in with something. I'm going to cover you for trying to kill my Pikmin. And then you purple side B, it makes him respond. And then you can come in with a uh, red grab, a red fair, something like that. But you keep that pressure going. He's run out of stage in, in the normal sense. So now's your time to kind of press forward a little bit. Maybe not go crazy. Maybe not do any crazy reads, but just like, hey, I'm going to keep the pressure up. I'm not just going to do these, these kind of like non-committal side Bs. Yeah. Honestly, look at this now. I think I just committed way too hard. Like, you know what? I don't want to deal with fighting him up close. I will lose up close. Let me not interact instead of interact on my own terms. I think I went too far back. Yes. Into my non-interaction. Yes. And and, and I've lost sets like that as well because I've been so committed to, like, 
I can't kill him. I can't go for reads. I can't go for anything. And then I, I think it works the worst against like Zomba, for example, where he'll live to 200 because it's just chip damage, just chip damage. And I'm too scared to do anything else. And then I get reversal at 30% and I die. And that goes back into that kind of Olimar where you need to be like perfectly in tune with everything. And if you know how to do it, it's fine. And this is a great basis, but just getting a little bit more out of that comfort zone and finding those openings to hit him and really paying attention. How is he interacting with my Pikmin? When can I get in there? That I'll was worth looking at another set as well, where I don't like assuming I keep playing like this, it might be worth looking at another set as well where I don't play like a bitch the entire time. <laughs> if you let's finish this game and if you have a different set you want, we can do that one. Um so like here, I like the red toss. I think a yellow fair would have been better here. This is probably one of those things where you're kind of like queuing up the tosses and you're not really thinking about how he's closing the gap, so you go for the yellow the yellow side be there. But a yellow fair would have been decent, right? It's gonna be semi uh, pretty safe, all things considered. Definitely be better than the side be out of there. Ends up getting, you know, hit a shield. It's not the worst. Just DI out. You're back on the ledge. It's not the end of the world. I honestly have gotten really comfortable on this platform lately. A lot of the times, uh, as long, assuming the character doesn't have some massive disjoint like Shulk, like, I'll go out here because it's so reactable when you see them coming out. You can go to the back end of the platform, reorganize your Pikmin, do whatever you want, decide if you want to go to the ledge, if you want to drop down to a uh, purple side B or something. So you don't have to, like, rush your way off of there because... This is going to be a slower-paced matchup, and yes, he is going to get wafty if they accept that, but it's fine, right? Like, he's guaranteed to get a waft each game, pretty much, but he's not going to throw it out for no reason. So if the game goes to four, you know, three, two minutes before he's used a waft, then that changes nothing. Real so quick, Look at Wario's face. Isn't that funny? A little bit, yeah. He's a bit of a wacky dude. He eats garlic whole, so... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, But I, I like that kind of weight there. I like the up -B. I've been using that a lot more as well. You just up-B pass me like, no, I don't want to deal with this. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, you, you seem use up the It's so good. It, it's kind of like you're, oh, this is how I'll fly past you and I don't have to commit. Because a lot of people expect you to swing and then you just don't and they're like, wait, what? Yep. I've been using it to like Pikmin toss. There's like Pikmin toss up the ass somewhere. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. So I want to go back here. So you run away. If you're kind of playing this corner game, I think this is fine. This is what I would normally play as well. You know, you get hit here with a fair grab. It's not the end of the world. I think landing on the platform would have been good because you could have refreshed your double jump. Right, try and get your resources back immediately before before you have to go back into disadvantage. Um, but you have to go for a little bit of a greedy down air here, right? You do the idea like, oh, maybe I can fall. I'm gonna try and bait it out, and I see you drift back, and he's just ready for it. He's like I said, he was pretty dialed into the set. It seemed like he knew exactly where you wanted to be, and he's really trying to press his advantage on you. Um, but you know, don't be afraid to go to the ledge either. Either it's not great, but like sometimes you just need to change the dynamic of that disadvantage. Nice. So here, I'm not a fan of what you did. So you pluck, you knock him away, and this is fine. Pluck, pluck, I would have whistled. I want to get the purple in the back of my line. And the reason I want it there is because he's going high. He's in a spot where I can't necessarily start pressuring horizontally. He's probably going to jump. I want to get the red. I want to get the yellow in front. Yellow's going to have that good arc so it catches vertically better with side B. And you're going to be able to make him deal with those Pikmin. So then you can come in with a purple aerial. You can catch his landing. You can side B. You can do something else. But when you have the purple in front, you're leading you're, you're, you're leading with your best Pikmin, and you essentially have two dead ones after. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Nice. I like the delay here a lot. I think that's exactly what you wanted to do. I think you just got a little bit antsy when you got up. I don't know if that dash attack was intentional or not, but it was like you wait. He doesn't know what to do because you're just not getting up. You've waited so long. He doesn't want to pick something too prematurely and then get punished. And I think here, you do a jab, fine. You could have purple side be plucked. You could have gone, let me generate some pressure real quick, right? You offer a dash attack. It's a bit committal. Uh, it's right in front of him, so it's going it's to get you punished. It's unfortunate, but something else to keep in mind, right? Like, play to the strengths of those Pikmin. Or even just, like, hold the one Pikmin you have and try to react to what he's doing. You're probably not going to die to a neutral B at that, at that kind of percent. So I think you would have been fine. That was a good recovery. I don't blame you for going for the up air. It's just he managed to get his out first. Yeah, I should have something first. And I missed like So, like, here, he's got waft. He's got a percent. He's got the stock lead. You're going to have to approach. It's a little uncomfortable. I like what you're doing here. I like how you're trying to come in, threaten. You're right. You, you kind of faint that out. You're not going too crazy with the bear. You don't want to get super approach, like, approach heavy. But I think that's what you're going to have to do. And on a stage like town, it's okay to wait until those platforms get to a, a, a spot where you're better off, right? Like, maybe you don't want to deal with him up on that top left platform. So, you go, you know what? I'll run away. I'll see if he'll approach me. 
and that can play into your favor more because it is going to be easier to stop him when he's coming at you. Maybe if he doesn't approach, you go, okay, you know what? I'll dump my lineup. I'll get one that's more appropriate for what I'm doing. But on, on a dynamic stage like Town and City, you want to play to their strengths more because it's he's he can't do it forever. So something I've started doing a lot more, uh, and it's just really important to do. You, you go for the, the the classic, you try an aerial, you whip, you're like, okay, I'll get another option out. Maybe I can anti-air and with down tilt here. There is no shame in missing and running away. I think that's the, the power in that is so important because oftentimes uh, players will think you're going to press a button after. And just that change of pace and going, no, I'm not. I'm just going to walk away, run away, do something else is going to be huge, right? Or maybe even if you wanted to attack here, you do a retreating fair if you think he's going to come in. Or you do a runaway side B, grounded side B, try and catch his landing. But the down tilt here is very much an all or nothing option again. Because that down tilt's minus 17 on shield. So if he held shield, so if he whiffed, you're getting punished. And when you're in playing a game where you're trying to maintain that almost safety aspect of it, and you don't want to give him more openings than he's getting, you're going to you're gonna want to incorporate some more of that. You know what? I missed. It's fine. I'm out of here. Gameplay a little bit more. Little jab lock there, not the end of the world. So here, back air is not a bad idea. It catches him if he comes in. I probably would have side B to him with the purple, retreat back with a landing fair, right? So instead of doing this, you purple side B this way. You're now facing him. Now you can land with a fair, protect yourself. That move is minus four, minus five on shield with the red, right? When you space it right, that's gonna provide some protection. Now you can get your lineup going. You've got distance between you. And if he wants to come in and approach, there's already distance. There's a lot of like approaching he has to do. Whereas this bear, this really only covers one option. I think well, you does like a, a fair and just punches through the purple side B. Oh, I guess the fair covers it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You're, you're setting up like a wall. He deals with the purple, red fair is there. The goal is to have you not get hit here. Yeah, a punish would be good, but I think if, if anything, and it's going to be a little bit hard, you guys have only been playing for about two, two and a half minutes, it's hard to get all this information in the game. Like, he's very much ready for you to counter swing. Makes sense, yeah. Um, so being able to like run away or incorporate those different things is a big part. Uh, and that's what I like to do with, with, um, with the purple side be a lot how uh like i handle like teacher yoshi when i have like two purples i'll throw one purple make them hit it make them deal with it and i come in with another hitbox and it just wins unfortunate Okay, I see why you did the air dodge there. You just kind of big, big concerns trying not to die here, and I get it. Okay. Oh, he got that read. Hmm. So this interaction makes sense. You down tilt. You know he shielded it. Maybe even if you don't realize that he parried it. You want to get out of there. The roll in puts you in an awkward spot though, right? Because you're this is like classic player psychology you make a mistake you're at the ledge you don't want to die your first priority is go inwards it's the same way when we pressure somebody and we read they're going to roll in or something on a tech chase or something like that here realistically what you want to do if you could jump away or run away that's fine maybe he won't punish but what you can even do is you could shield he can't kill you off a grab warrior cannot grab you at 60 and confirm into waft it doesn't happen right so thinking about his win condition when you're in those situations where you're maybe nervous or you're on edge is going to be an important part of fighting off his win condition because i think here you're getting a little bit too in the motions almost autopiloting in a sense and it's making it easier for him to find those openings because he's ready he's he's on the hunt for it mm -hmm. there's a lot of times where he comes in on you like this and I don't know, maybe you like you're stuck in a skin animation here. You might have to do a little bit better job of when you're fighting him. Like really pay attention to when he's trying to land. Almost like I was saying earlier with the wolf, uh, like how we handle wolf. Like we're really focused on when are they jumping, when are they landing, because they're going to approach these aerials a lot of the time. So then you can, you know, proactively get your movement out, get your jump out to stop them, get your your shield out to maybe parry it or something like that. Because with a, a character like Warrior who's got such strong frame data, you can't really be retroactively dealing with it. You can't be going through the motions. And, and and just like running and throwing side being and stuff like that it's got to be hyper focused on where is he coming at can i bait him out and stuff like that and i think this is why you're getting opened up a lot because you're trying to do the normal stuff and then when he does hit you you're trying to like correct the issue like oh he dash attacked me at the ledge i'm gonna up smash oh it missed i'm gonna do it again next time i'm at the ledge again or something like that you're really trying to force these kills but he they're not coming naturally like you need to intercept as he's coming in not after the fact
See, I like that, right? You down tilt, you do nothing. You recognize I don't need to roll here. Sure, he could punish it, but he didn't. You didn't panic there, and that's an important thing. I honestly got don't blame me for going high. I would have done it too. <laughs> you do love your high recoveries. It's so safe up there. <laughs> it isn't to get the land. That's yeah, hard. that's the hard part. But you know it as much as I do. I don't want to be stuck in a ledge. That was a terrible neutral air. I think you were just like aiming for the stars. Like I hope he's up here to catch me. Um, yeah, and, I was like, if I get that neutral, maybe I get something going. And and, and it's it's pretty bad, right? You're not you're in a rough spot percent wise. Like this is gonna be a very difficult comeback to make. Um, but you just have to like, okay, what is my win condition? It's avoid his combos. It's get my purples. Get those big Olimar explosive combos. Play into that. You have a purple here, so let's start working to our favor, right? Maybe you. You jump and then you jump away, or you you know land back and then you yell F smash, right? Trying to use that distance, playing to each strength of those Pikmin. It felt very homogenized here in, in, in what you're doing with them. It was just like I'm just attacking, I'm hoping it works, uh, and it just made it a lot harder for you. If this game more than anything felt like you were trying your strategy, you recognized it didn't work, right? You can't play hyper passive against him; he's going to be on top of you. And instead of like internalizing. Uh, at least in the game, that, okay, this isn't working. I need to be a bit more meaningful in my engagements with him, not panic, really think about every interaction and try and focus on where he's going. You started just kind of like blurring the line between your, your Pikmin usage and going, I'm attacking with this, I'm attacking with this, and not giving them the individual thought you wanted, right? I, I, I don't want to call it was like, I don't want to say you were like tilted or anything like that, but it was almost like a, a level of tilt mentally to where you stopped giving every interaction with Olimar the thought it needs. Because you know how it is playing him. If you're not like mentally sharp and clean with him, it doesn't work. And this definitely showed that you might have started out with a good game plan, but it didn't work, and you let that happen immediately. So, let me finish this. There it is. Do you want to watch a different set, or do you want to keep doing the second game? Yeah, we'll keep doing this set. Okay. So, you've never heard me say things this smart ever, Kappa? Well, <laughs> I'll have you know I'm, I'm quite the analysis. <laughs> I was just listening to go off by all of them. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I'm not going to say I was cooking that weekend, but I was. Um, what stage are we going to? All right, Battlefield. What did he ban? Do you remember? Uh, He banned, I want to say, FD. Small Battlefield? Else. Maybe. Maybe Small Battlefield? That, that's, what, that's what I'm thinking. Because FD, definitely, he he does not want to have to fight you head-on all the time because that makes it really predictable. And Small Battlefield removes a lot of the high verticality, but it's also more compact uh, compared to, like, PS2. I don't think Battlefield's a yeah. terrible option, especially if you're... So, going into, I like Battlefield a lot, going into it, I think it's a great stage for you. It gives you a lot of leeway. The problem is, if you don't have a good way to handle him, if he's got maybe the tempo in the match or something like that, it's going to be a lot harder for you because this is a circle camp heaven for him if he gets a good lead if he really commits to it um so that's something we have to keep in mind going forward your stage selection may need to be more tailor-made when you're fighting him to like okay i might have to go to a, a stage that's a little bit more uncomfortable or that gives him a little bit more approach leeway but it denies him the ability to hit that like really high vertical camping right that it's the, the reason we ban Kalos is the disadvantage is bad but also because they just get on their bike and they jump back and forth and we can't catch them you don't want that but somewhere more compact like this, or maybe even PS2, although it can be a little rough as well, um, can be tough. But if you can start out with a good tempo and making him play your game, those advantages are eliminated. And that's something that we might have to focus on in the future for you, so that it's less about don't interact, don't interact. But it's like, put up such a strong wall that he has to interact constantly, and I do it sparingly as I want. It's the same way like how Shutan would handle uh, T's Pac-Man, for example. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just waiting. That's fine. You just throw shit till the cows come home, right? And here, you know, he catches you with a fair. It's a, kind of an awkward timing. Like, okay, I don't think he's going to commit. Maybe, eh, I, I honestly, God, I'm not going to tell you how reactable whatever it is because it's weird. Maybe just, like, really focus in trying to create as much safe distance between those side bees as you can, right? So that it's less likely that he can jump in. Because you can cover plenty of distance. You could have been all the way back here and been side and it would have been just fine. But you don't want to leave yourself in a vulnerable spot with a character with that high mobility.
So I want to ask you this. Do you legitimately think flying to this side was any more beneficial than going up to the other ledge? Um, I think, go back to the situation where I'm off stage. So. So he up here. here. So this spot, yeah, because even if I'm always saving, like, C is a perfect spot where up to the right side. He's going to get free damage. He can ferry me, he can bite me, he can down here and air, whatever. Like, get granted, I'm not going to die here. Yeah. But I'm going to take some good damage, and it could be a lot. If he does his up B, where he does, like, up B to the ledge, yeah. he hits you with any combos in the back here, it's just, like, 70 damage. Oh, well, yeah, like, 30 okay. damage. Okay. He's in the same spot. Okay. So I actually think, yes, here, I will lose the purple to make sure I get to the ledge ledge. Okay, as long as... Uh, yeah, that's fine. I wanted to hear your thoughts on it. I mean, I probably would have ditched just the white and gone up and risked it. That's totally fine, as long as you have, like, a very clear, concise idea. Uh, we could actually go back and then focus on why you got hit to begin with. I think the up smash there... Yeah, all right. I, I, I'm blaming that, you for man. going for it. Big thing is you want to get a lineup again. And here, I think... the I, I don't blame you for the red pivot grab, right? Like, he's kind of landing on you. Or he's yeah, looking like... like he's going to, I should say. And it's a little awkward. And he comes in. And unfortunately, pivot grab with three Pikmin has a thousand years of lag. So you end up getting hit here. But it's not the worst. That nair after, though, I don't know if maybe that was you trying to buffer a jab. Maybe after the grab or something like that. That puts you in a much worse spot here. Because had you just recognized, okay, I grabbed, I messed up, I'm going to get fared. DI out, jump away, right? DI up and out, jump away, or maybe air dodge in. It would have been fine there. So definitely just, like, try to fight off, once again, that panic and really go, okay, I made a mistake. It's fine. Let's pick the the perfect response in this situation. Because I can minimize the punch to be nothing more than a few percent. Solid weight on that. It's like here again, I don't like what you're doing here. I think you got the, the, the perfect play. You got him with the down air, right? Maybe if you want to go in for another swing here, maybe a forward air or something like that, that's fine. Maybe a down tilt. You need to get a lineup, right? One Pikmin is not good. Not only do you want to fill out your lineup so you can do more side, but you can make him do something, maybe get a yellow for the extra range, but you can start working that lineup back into those purples. And when you're swinging here, you're in a corner. You're like a scared animal. You're fighting him off. You don't have shield pressure. That's not how Olimar works. So when you're hitting him, you're swinging, you're trying to do stuff. He's just jumping away, and then you end up committing neutral air once again, right? Trying to just jump. He goes, now that doesn't work. I'm going to wait until you do something, and I'm going to come into my airspeed. Whereas if maybe you stick on the ground, you pluck some Pikmin, you throw, you do a, you know, a tip or F smash even, right? We, we look at this here. You go, oh, instead of down tilt, I'm going to F smash in this distance. You can't do anything about this. And then you pluck, and then you do something. Or maybe you roll in, right? You want to get behind him if you think he's going to come in at you. Something like that. But you can't just like swing and thought of those attacks that often, at least with the one Pikmin in your lineup. Maybe you had a purple. So that's something else to keep in mind. You don't want to just kind of fall into that, ah, I'm, I'm in a bad spot. I have to just brute force my way out because it doesn't always work. I got hit a lot for just, like, trying to throw a Pikmin at certain spots, and he's always, not always, but he's so ready to, like, get in and barely hit me. Yes, he, he's dancing right outside that range, and that that's a lot what I remember... Uh, Tweak would do a lot with his wolf, or even Diddy Kong or whatever, when I would fight him, or when, when I'd see him fight other Olimars, where it's like right outside the range. And that's where your additional delay, or maybe you kind of walk forward, right? You, you do some non-committal ways to gain space, but also leaves you open to react to what he's doing is important. And then you maybe overshoot. So instead of forward airing here, right, maybe you walk forward as he jumps. Or maybe you, 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 you know, you run up and then you shield it, because he... What most he can do, he can do a command grab or something like that. And then you can be like, oh, you jumped, now I'm going to up air and I'm going to react to you rising because you're not going to do a rising aerial. Something like that. But I think the fair here isn't the worst. It's like you do the side B and then you kind of drift back in. You're side being and then coming in, but the side B provides no legitimate protection because there's not a purple there. Honestly, the pur a purple side B probably still would have flanked with the forward air given what's happening, but that's something else to keep in mind. Like, maybe you drift off stage there, right? You throw the side B, now you've got a yellow in front, so now you can try and play some ledge shenanigans with that. Right? I, if I had to choose between stuck on the ledge and getting hit or going to the ledge, or, or being stuck at the edge of the stage and getting hit or going to the ledge and changing the dynamic of that disadvantage, I would probably change it if I felt like I was more safe there. It, it's worth incorporating in spurts. Like, you don't want to be in disadvantage, but you're already kind of there, and now you have to find yeah. a way to get out of there. Like, I might as well just go to the ledge and hold the L there. Yeah. So like here, I think it's fine. Unfortunately, you land with an up air, so it's got a hard landing lag, so you get lag there. I don't blame you for doing the up air. It just, I honestly didn't expect you to have lag, but the, the move can, you know, it did. So that opened you up there. 
uh, that might fall back into a similar category to where like sometimes you're throwing out hitboxes that maybe you don't need to throw out. Maybe you should rely more off the movement or maybe you drop down from here and you're like, you know what? I'll directional air dodge back on the platform. Almost like not like a wave land in the sense, but something mm -hmm. akin to it so that you're falling back. You're getting some distance. Now you got to pick me. Now you can fall through and fair the platform if you need to. You can have smash. You can pluck. You can do stuff like that. Because if, if every time you're regaining your footing, you're immediately swinging again, you're running that risk of being wrong and then messing it all up. So like I'm trying to play complete opposite from last game, but that's not working either. <laughs> yes, and, and and that happens to the best of us. We get we get messed up so bad on the strategy, we just try the exact opposite, hoping it'll work, and it just doesn't. And realistically, the the, the strategy with Olimar is your your base is like that middle ground, that mid range that I'm reacting and making them play around me, and then you slide to the hyper defensive or the hyper aggressive, depending on what you have to do, right? So it's like when I fought Ned, for example, that weekend, I was hyper defensive against Sephiroth, but it wasn't run away the entire time. It was side B, side B, side B, make him approach me because that's my advantage, then interact. And then his answer for that throughout the set, you know, games three and four, when he won was, I'm going to go hyper aggressive. I'm going to dash attack. I'm going to overshoot. And then my game five was, okay, okay, he's been playing a lot more aggressive. I can't stick to that super defense I was doing. Now I've got to play defensive, sure, but I have to be ready to switch it up and go a bit more aggressive and catch him off guard and not let him be the only one aggressing and calling the shots. Good. We, the, the forward is at the corner we talked about. Yep. So the first one, you're coming from ledge. It makes sense, right? Like you're trying to catch him. That's different than you landing, resetting, and then doing it. And here, I think this is, yeah, this is exactly it. Like you were saying, you're just, oh no, I hope this works. And if it doesn't, you get punished. Whereas if you wait, maybe you pluck, maybe you jump and then forward air, like a full hop rising fair. That's a lot harder to punish because you're in the air. You can drift out of there. This commits you to that small space. I know we, you would have done the, the plucked. You immediately <laughs> then whistle grab. I, I, I definitely am always on the lookout for that if they're if they're holding shield up there. And that's fine. I'm not going to tell you to start sw uh, dropping hot tech mid-set. Um, but we can look at this back air here. So you go for the back air. It could have been a short hop back air. I shouldn't have full hop. Yeah. I, I think I wanted the short hop. I think I yeah. Awesome. Miss input is fine, but it's something to keep in mind next time. Or you could even maybe short hop up air, right? Stay under him. He can't drop down that easily from the platform out of shield because you can't shield drop in this game. So that gives you time to maybe poke the platform under the platform, land, and then try and catch his landing from there. Okay, so let's 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 you you swing in. You want to hit him. You want him with the big move. He's definitely shown that he's not too keen on approaching until he's one hundred percent ready. He's respecting those F smashes. So what we can do here is all right. We've got a lineup. We've got a red. We've got a purple. We've got something else. Let's default back to the the kind of normal. Let's side B. Let's make him play around our side B. Let's find our openings. We can't rush this, right? So you get the fair there, and that's fantastic. I really like that forward air. But what we can do here is we can run back, run away. This is not a good position to approach. What you need to do is you need to run away, start side B pressuring again. Get your lineup, fill out your lineup. Use those purples to your advantage. This is you running in, trying something. But Wario's got such a, uh, such a quick forward-facing option that forward is just going to cut through everything. He he doesn't think, I guarantee you, uh, Ludo does not think about forward air safety. He goes, I press it, I win. I press it, I clank. So you need to go, okay, you want to press that? That's fine. I will generate lag for you. I will make you consider your button presses. I really like that whistle down smash. So here, I, I, I honestly, you end up getting the kill, and that's great. But I want to talk about this. Is what I was going back to earlier that that catching the landings thing, right? So you throw that he jumps there, he air dodges, right? You don't have to run back here, right? There's a lot of distance between you guys. You maybe could have done a short hop up air if you wanted to try and bait out an air dodge or something like that. But you could have held your ground and been like, you know what? I have an up air. It's transcendent. You can't beat it. You do not have a move to beat it. Um. So running back here, if you want to do it, maybe try and catch uh, his air dodge if he's going to do it with a landing. But you end up running back here. You run in, try for the fair. Not the best fair. Definitely could have opened you up for a bad punish if he would have properly done his thing. But that's something important to keep in mind in the future, really trying to catch those landings sharp with him. He's scared of dying. He's at 120, you have a purple. And, and you're, you're able to push that and, and make him respect you by having him air dodge. So being ready to follow up on that in the future is going to be a little bit more important. But you end up catching an up smash here anyway because he makes a mistake, and that's, that's just as good. Might have been able to upstairs that. 
I considered it, but I was like... Uh, yeah, it, it was a little wacky, like, the way he was moving. I don't blame you for not punishing that. You're not going to punish everything. I like the fair here. That had no business hitting. You should have been hit by Nair. Um, but you definitely were not up smashing again on this. Up smash can punch through Wario like Nair. It's actually weird. I think it's the way his hurt box, the hit boxes on Nair happen. They're like weird, and it's like inside his body. So there's probably spark parts where it's exposed. But um, here you should have just backered. I think the up smash was a little premature because it's that awkward sour spot. He's dying out, and you know he's mashing. Remember what I said? I'm so bad at recognizing when I get the sour spot. <laughs> like I'm actually really bad at it. Uh, good rule of thumb, if you're unsure, there's no harm in resetting, right? You run away, you, t you do a purple toss, try and catch the landing. Because like like Wolf, like Rob, like Roy, these players are not thinking about their safety. They're going, Olimar clanks, my buttons win, I mash them. It's like a Mario player, when you down tilt them and they nair and you parry it and you have smash them, these guys are no different. <laughs> I hate this game. Down tilt on Wario is like stupid at low percents in a bad way. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 go back. Let's unpack this whole thing. So we do the up smash. Go for another one. Unfortunately, it clanks. You get fared here. It happens. I like the down tilt, but he fares you again, right? You try and fare him. Game says no. Here, I think jump side B, like rising side B, would have been better than up air. But it's not bad if you want to keep your if you want to keep your purple. Understandable. You go to the ledge, do something like that. Jump side B probably would have caught his shield. And then let you either whistle it back up or maybe do like you jump, come into the side B, it bounces, then you fall with a dare or a nair or something like that. But if you go to if you go to the, the, the ledge, it's not bad. Right? Because that's going to shift the dynamic of the disadvantage once again. It's gonna give you some time to mix it up and let's see what you do from there. Because look, he parried didn't matter, can't punish it. And you add the weight in there, it's fantastic. Here, he ends up nairing you, he just kind of reacts, he does whatever you get hit, it's fine. But I think after that, you're trying like you're you're repeating the same thing again. Right? Like, you get hit here, and once again, you could have maybe jumped, tried to do something, maybe drift in, try to neutral air dodge, maybe try to catch you with something, land, and then reset, run away. But you end up going to the ledge here, you delay it a little bit, sure, but you get up, and then you just, you just throw out moves again. Like, yeah, you could have shielded that, right? You had the time, you started moving, you got caught. But there's little mix-up in what you're doing there, and it's making it easy for him to get you. And that's not to say you always want to jump and go high. There's a lot of difficulties in doing with Olimar, but really thinking about like, okay, I'm on this ledge, what do I do? Maybe you wait and then you roll away, right? You, you wait, you do your get up, and then as he's coming in, you roll, right? And at most, what's he do? He lands, maybe grabs if he's really quick with it. Probably not. There's actually, you know what? There's no way he reacted to that. He had that nair coming, you could have rolled away. He might have been able to run up, do something, maybe, but it would have been probably inconsequential and you would have been on stage. I honestly yeah, got. I, myself in the corner. That was the worst snare possible. I thought your back was to him here, but I guess you turn around. Oh, yeah, you turn around. Was that a slingshot? Oh, God. I slingshot <laughs> bro. I, I've been slingshotting all along. Um, I thought you were going to back air him here, looking at this, but forward air also. I mean, it's it's minus four if you space it properly. It's just really hard to space. That's a really high fair, though, right? So that's yeah. putting a lot of, uh, you know, danger on you. He just nares it. And. You know as well as I do, it's okay to take some hits with Olimar if you're not dead. You getting nared, it's whatever. You're not dead, that's the important thing. You've got a purple, you can come back in and turn this around. But it's just a matter of what you're doing. There, really solid shield, right? You, you did the same regular get up. Okay, we all do it. We're gonna we're gonna repeat these options. But now you commit, oh, I'm gonna shield this time to be my fastest option. It's gonna deny what he's doing. And then you do it, but then you flounder it. <laughs> you, you literally jump and do nothing. Um, it could have been a nerves thing. Maybe you were a little worried about messing it up and dying. Whatever it is. Uh, it just puts you in a bad spot. But you had the right idea there. I think if you would have been a little bit quicker on on that uh, punish out of that, you would have been a lot better off. Or maybe you maybe you drop shield and you roll in. I don't think we can punish back out of shield. Um, I think all of them are two. I think back is minus 11. It I think Grant is two. Probably is. Let me let me look up Warriors. I'm pretty sure back is minus 11. But he also has a lot of range on. Like, if you back here, it's pretty far away, so you don't really get to punish it. Yeah, it's in. in, in even if we're yeah, it's minus eleven. But we can go and we can load it like this, where right, you come in, so you shield it. That's definitely fairable, right? Like you do a short hop rising fair, easy hit right where he is. Um, but even if you don't want to, let's think about what else we could do. We could drop shield and maybe try and jab. Sure, it's slower. But what is he doing after? Let's see what he does after this. 
So you jump. He's probably reacting at this point. He shields. So he shielded what you maybe could have, what, what he might have shielded a jab. You could have grabbed. You could have maybe dropped shield and then try to mix up a jab timing on his shield. But no matter what happened, you ended up committing to essentially an empty hop, which puts you in a really awkward spot. So I think the shield was a great idea. What your execution after was just lacking in that moment, maybe because of nerves or whatever. But that's something to be a little bit more tightened up on next time. Nice jump, mixing it up. Good, good. There we go. Do you, uh, so I want to go through the sequence again. Do you see how much more willing you are to kind of play this back and forth with him now? You're not running. You're sitting and you're reacting to where he's going. And you're going, ah, I have disjoints. Let me clip you real quick. Let me do this, right? So you get hit here. You're like, oh, no, this is bad. You hold shield, recognizing he's going to want to swing your kill percent, right? Your first instinct gets some distance, pluck, and now you're ready to engage him, right? You swing. If it was a little awkward, you could have missed, sure. But then you don't, you don't stop. You go, all right, now it's my turn to follow up. But it's not some awkward down tilt. It's not anything like that. It's covering your whiff in a way where you're both kind of swinging and missing, right? This is you going, ah, I've got the I've got the read on you. I know how to catch you first. And then you go and you catch his landing of this. You bait out. You don't just overshoot it. You go, I'm going to do a non-committal up air where you can't really catch me. And then there, you do a narrow to shield. It's so good. That's the confidence that you showed in this five seconds that you need to have when you're at the ledge, where you're not bo botching things. And it's okay if you make those mistakes, right? Like when you down tilt after the fair earlier and you got punished. This was a, a, an adjustment from that. This was going, I'm not going to down tilt. I'm going to use my dash attack because it's a really good zone breaker with Olimar. It's really his only zone breaker in that sense. And that's the way to catch him. I'm going to catch the landing with the up air. That's the same type of thought you want to be giving in those interactions all the time. Using that yellow's distance to create some additional pressure, right? So you can keep outspacing him. So, you get him here, you throw him Pikmin on, it's really good. I like the fair here. I think, I probably would have tried to raw bear there, right? Maybe, like, do, like, a, a rising one. Uh, just try and catch here. But the F smash is not terrible. But keep in mind, right, if you F smash up close, the Pikmin ticks could make it safer. But, like, a raw purple F smash is not safe on shield. So, you have to be a little, like, if you want to make that read, if you want to make that play, that's fine. But what we could do is instead maybe keep that like soft pressure going that I'm outside your range that I'm floating around you. I want you to hit the red. I want you to hit the yellow because they're slowing you down. They're giving me openings. I've got a purple here with a back air and an up air with your name on it. And the moment you fuck up, I kill you. I don't need to expend my a meter essentially, right? This is you burning your meter in a fighting game. And instead of burning it, you could keep it going with like soft, like I'm floating around you. Come approach me again. I have a purple. I'll kill you. But instead you're like, I'm shooting it all right now. And if I miss, it doesn't work. But if it does great, I win. But do you want to take that risk? You know, that's something you have to ask yourself in the moment. And when you're losing or when maybe when it's even or you're making a comeback, there's no shame in keeping it going. If you have the confidence that you can outplay him, play into it. Because, like, look what you're doing right now, right? So you, you, you want to kill him. You miss. You go in there. You get there in a little scuffle. You don't want to swing. No one wants to die. You purple side be perfectly fine. And then you go in there and you let another one rip. And then that just opens him up for that, for for dash, uh, down tilt dash tag. I will say, I don't think purple siding the forward smash is a bad option at all. No. Because it can, it can catch people doing shit. I agree. And Especially I, with yellow forward smash. And I've done it a lot, too. I, I see you do that shit, too, even, where it's just like, you go for it, you have, like, a pretty confident read on a situation. Yes. Where you just think someone's, like, a for pressure. And it's, it's, I, I'm not telling you don't do that. I think that is also a fantastic option. It's dependent on the situation. You'd already made one mistake by forward smashing and not having it. So at that point, you need to disengage from the situation and go, okay, I don't have a read on his defensive options in the sense of getting a kill. Let's go back to a neutral where we're doing this song and dance. I'm making him play around my Pikmin, and then I can intercept him when I know what he's going to do. Right? You'd already played your hand, messed up, and you tried it again, and you got punished for it. Good. Really like that yellow usage there. I don't blame you for going for the fair there or the F smash there. Trying to use it like almost like an anti air, putting up that wall with the yellow F smash. If he goes back, it catches him. Um, it's just a little awkward, right? Like I'm saying, Wario fair. He literally is not thinking. He presses it. He goes, I hope this clanks. If I win, cool. If not, that sucks. But it's not going to ever stop them from doing it. Mm hmm.
So you go for the uh, F smash or up smash here. Unfortunate, not gonna work. Uh, could have been an attempted parry or something like that. Wario's four there is minus seven, so it's actually not the craziest move in terms of safety, um, but is gonna be not really up smashable under most circumstances. Um, end up spot dodging though. I think here you could have got away with maybe not with maybe rolling or just kind of jumping away instead. Uh, thought process being his back is to you, and typically shield grabs. Uh, don't all right. So let me, let me try to uh, articulate my thoughts on this properly because I don't want to fuck it up. So when you're in front of him, the spot dodge is almost instinctual to try and uh, dodge the shield grab. Yeah, correct? yeah, no, yeah. So it's I know you're gonna say back like, to back's, you. He's not gonna grab. Yeah, but he 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 honestly ends up doing it, which is weird. Had you done something else, had you not spot dodged, you would have been fine. When, when he's playing this, like, really hyper runaway game when he's got walk, he's got a lead, and he's trying to do this, there's a good chance you're going to have to run that clock for a little bit longer and just really focus on where he's landing and just keep chipping him with aerials and side bees until he fucks up. Because if you rush it too much, you get opened up in a bad way. And thankfully, he's still approaching. He's still playing your game. He's coming in at you, uh, and you can play that to your strength. I think here it's just you're a little bit too slow on it again. Like, he, you see he comes in, you up smash, he botches that, uh, and then there, you're just like, this is a really clean pivot grab landing, I think, right? You react to him missing the back air. You keep running. You've already committed to the run. You go, okay, he's probably going to land. I can catch him. And then what you do is shields, right? You have the blue coming up, so you just play into that. You go, okay, I made a mistake, but he made one back. Now it's my turn to capitalize. I don't commit the pivot grabs at all. I need to just do it sometimes with, like, one Pikmin or two. And now he's dead. Real simple. Nice. Okay, good, good. Yep, I get that distance. Get throwing those again. Oh, go back for a second. So what do you think about doing back throw there instead for positioning on stage? So you could. I probably would have done down throw fair or down throw purple side B, white side B. Um, just for the raw damage. I'm looking to make it up. If you back throw here, you're, you're going to get 23% off it, so that's pretty good. But the thing is, you need to make sure if you want to give him ledge or if you put him on the ledge, are you going to capitalize on it? Like, you can get more damage putting him over there, over on the other side of the stage, and it's going to give you more raw throughput, and then you're back to the normal neutral. If you put him over here and you're confident, like, I can kill him, I can dare him, I can do whatever, totally understandable. Uh, but it's kind of dependent on what do you want to go with the play. This is safe guaranteed damage with a down to a fair, and I think it's going to do 32%, to it's 34 actually. Um, that That's good. That's what you need right now. You need to close that gap. He doesn't have waft. You need to make up the difference right now, and I think that's going to be more impactful uh, on a consistent basis. So unless you're really feeling yourself, I think the down throw fair is better. Okay. So here, this looks like a just a messed up parry. Um, yeah. Unfortunate, but it happens. Finally hit you with that. It's been like all said he hasn't done that. I like that. Run away, run away. So this, this goes back into it. Again, those rising pairs are not safe. Maybe with slingshot, they'll be safe, right? That could be okay. something to play around with. I, I legitimately... Um, but you kind of, you know, I just need to drift back with him. I keep holding forward. And yes. Just back. And like here, you just run away. You're like, or even, um, grounded toss, like running grounded toss. So you run back purple side be that way, right back at him. And then it's like, he can't cover enough distance. If he comes in with something unsafe, you have a white to grab if he shields or you have a white to side B again. And then you down tilt and pop him up or something like that. But you kind of commit to the larger play here. You go purple side or blue side B into purple fair. If it doesn't work, just like those neutral layers, you open yourself up and he's able to get a big punish on you. So a lot of those a lot of those games for you or a lot of the stocks for you where you're just throwing things out so scared and so worried about it. But when you were cooking, when you were playing really confident and good and you were able to kind of meet him in the middle, especially in that middle of that game too, it felt a lot more even. And that's when it that's what it should be. If, if you guys are kind of evenly matched in that sense, or you're playing, I would honestly say it's more Olimar's advantage. Wario's advantage in this matchup isn't his approach game, in my opinion, because while he does have good buttons and, and movement, he has more modest hitbox size and that lends to your success like the reason something like a wolf is so tough is because his moves are the size of a continent and they kill pikmin instantly warrior forward air doesn't do that warrior neutral air doesn't do that so what he's going to be looking for is he's going to be looking for disadvantaged places he's going to want to keep you off stage you want to keep you at the ledge and he did that well but even with that i mean you kept it more competitive that game too and i think that was when you trying to kind of immediately adjust your play style so I think going into this, next time you fight Ludo, if you're on point, maybe play to a stage. Maybe don't go to town if you're not comfortable with him camping you there. Maybe start on uh, town or 
if they don't have Callus as a starter, you could ban Town and PS2 and then go to either Smashville, you know, maybe practice with a Warrior if you can on Smashville and get it in out of that comfort zone and start practicing those things, right? How to box with Warrior, how to play with him. Because he is limited. His out-of-shield game is not the worst, but, like, an out-of-shield neutral air doesn't lead to anything. An out-of-shield fair doesn't really lead to anything, right? He has to be landing with them. So that can play more into your ability to kind of play aggressive. Maybe you can hyperfixate on getting those uh, two purples more often so that you're able to pressure him a bit better, and then you're able to really, like, create a sequence where he has to respond to you. Because you didn't really have two purples this set. It was just throw, 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 and he'd kill purples every now and then, or you'd be stuck in disadvantage. You never got to capitalize on that. But uh, that that is a a game changer. That's your DLC, you know, meter, essentially. Yep. Yeah, I... Yeah, I guess I just gave him too many openings. I thought he just kind of ran me down when I, like, was camping two or so. I'm just going to run at him. But now he can't just camp me and let me make all the mistakes. Yeah, he, you know, like... he even when he had a lead, he was still approaching you somewhat. You'd run back and he'd come on in there and it's like, oh, that's great. Coming on in? I can, I can anti, you know, I can retreat and fair you or I can, you know, parry do this. You didn't parry a single aerial. That opens up a lot. Even if you don't want to do them all the time, just the occasional parry on something is going to open him up so much, right? Because Wario's Nair, well, let me look at it real quick. So his Nair is, comes out frame four. It is minus four on shield, but it lingers for 30 years. So that's an easy desync up smash. And the move does 6% at its most. That's not killing a purple. So that's an easy parry up smash with a purple, right? And those are more ways to catch him opening. If he's coming on you with a forward air, right? You parry that. You maybe even do something or you parry jab, right? That's a quick option. You can parry jab every single area he does if he's close enough. So just thinking about how you're, how you're interacting with that, because sometimes you can't run away. Sometimes you have to hold your ground. And I think that's that's just one of those things where maybe you're, at least in this case, maybe you psyched yourself out too much. Makes sense, yeah. I just feel like I didn't really leverage my pro pigment sauce at all. Like, I think I did, like, once or twice, and that was it. Yeah, no, it definitely felt like a lot of the game, you weren't giving your, your management as much thought as you would want. It was very, like, I'm playing the game with whatever I have, and I have, you know, there were spurts where you'd use them properly or really smart but it wasn't like a constant series of streamlined plays where you're like i'm using this to advantage to do that to do that to do that and i don't know if maybe that's a byproduct of you swapping characters multiple times out a tournament i don't know what your general mindset for that is uh, i don't know how you were warming up or whatever but that's something as well to keep in mind moving forward so you're always giving the best out of your out of your pikmin and stuff because that's how you're going to widen the gap with these characters that's how you're going to make those crazy advantage state plays I'm just writing stuff down right now, so that's why I'm kind of... Quiet. No, you're fine, you're fine. I'm happy to help. I'm gonna... Uh, Eskimo, I have not been to Lombardi's. I don't know what that is. If it's a place. What's up, NT? What's up? SGW. Sorry for not talking much, guys. I'm giving the buzz my wisdom. If you're, in, if you're in the freaking Myron zone, but not in the way you are. <laughs> I, I could talk about this character for, for days on end, dude. I, I love oh, breaking him down. No, don't worry. <laughs> All right. Um, so summarize, what do you think do you think I need to work on? Like the general stuff? So generally, uh if I didn't glitter playing playing against Warrior and stuff, I think you need to be a little bit more willing to play that mid-range, right? Like you don't have to camp, but you don't have to be the aggressor. It's like I'm ready to react what you're doing. Uh really playing around what he's doing, trying to like move almost always at a set distance of him. So it's like if he moves back, you move forward a little bit, right? So you have the ability to move in if you need to, if you have a lineup that permits it, or if he kills a Pikmin that permits it. But if he comes in, you have enough reactability. Right? That's a big thing. Uh, another thing as well is you you need to give more thought to your side Bs and to your aerials and to your spacing. And this goes back into it. Um, like, you can't be yellow side being or red side being when he's close. It needs to be, I'm moving back and I'm doing this to, to cover myself, right? Because you're getting in that autopilot of side B and autopilot of doing things, and you had an easy time coming in. You weren't respecting his airspeed. You respected it in the sense that you were scared and you didn't want to be near him and you wanted to camp. But when you actually did commit, you were not considering it. So worry about your spacing and focus on it a lot more. Really give the thought to your Pikmin. How are you stringing them together? What is the white doing for you? Are you using the yellow's range? Are you using the purple to pressure properly? Are you punishing him for killing them? Things like that. So that you're focusing on that a bit more. And it's not just, I have to run away, I have to run away. But you're staying open to interpretation to what he's doing. Um, and then in disadvantage, I think a big thing was uh, mixing it up. Don't be afraid to just shield or just run away sometimes. It doesn't always have to be, I missed an attack, I have to throw out another one. Or... Uh, you know, I, I miss an attack on spot dodge. Sometimes you can just do something and, and run away, or you can just hold shield, right? P like, if you have to choose between getting F-tilted and dying or getting grabbed and not dying, take the grab, right? If holding shield's going to do that. There's a time and place to mix it up, because with Olimar, it's a lot of repetition. This advantage is not, 
uh, I get, I quick, quick attack back the stage. It's I take three light hits and then I finally make it back and I'm not dead. And that's the important thing. Okay. Uh, all right. I don't think I have any questions. I think you 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 said a lot of things. I was just absorbing it. I like, do say a lot crap. of words. This is, yeah. It, it, this is what Myron does. This is, this is what a lesson with Myron is like. I I promise everyone. I I can I can teach how to play Smash Brothers. 